So the problem of antimicrobial resistance in India is probably more acute than nearly any other country in the world. You know, many of the antibiotics that worked just 5-10 years ago are pretty ineffective right now. There's a high burden of bacterial infections in India. Already about uh, 58,000 newborns in India uh, die every year because they have infections that are resistant to first-line antibiotics. That number is already an underestimate and is likely to grow much faster. Hospitals in India are quite behind the curve when it comes to infection control. I think anyone who's ever been to a hospital in India uh, will know this already, particularly the public facilities, but also many private facilities as well, don't really have infection control programs in place, they don't enforce hand hygiene, they don't uh, invest in the time for training their staff to do this. Water and sanitation is a very important part of this. Stopping open defecation is a very important part of this. Uh, improving air quality as it happens is also important because it reduces the incidence of respiratory infections for which people take a lot of antibiotics. Pharmaceutical plants making antibiotics in India have no regulations to follow for the effluent that they put out into the water. Some recent studies show that the concentration of antibiotics in the water around pharmaceutical plants is higher than what a patient should have in their body. India is also one of the few countries where many irrational combinations of antibiotics are available. And these combinations are used by pharmaceutical companies essentially to evade price caps that the government might put on you know, specific antibiotics. So they combine you know, two random antibiotics and, and call it something uh, different. Now there is a high court case in the Delhi High Court to try to stop that but there's a lot of pushback from the pharmaceutical industry. The use in livestock is growing because Indians are now eating far more meat than in the past. So chicken consumption is going up tremendously and uh, to raise the chicken in about you know four to five weeks, uh, they use a lot of antibiotics. If you go to the average poultry farm in Punjab or wherever, you'll see that these are all lacking. The nutrition is not great, the uh, hygiene is awful. So they are using the antibiotics as a substitute to just keep the chickens alive. And the reason people do that now is because antibiotics are very cheap. If they were forced to pay the full price of the antibiotics, this would no longer be a good option. Western fast food companies have started phasing out antibiotics not because of regulation but because of consumer pressure. Consumers were previously unaware that their chicken had been raised on antibiotics and once they found out they didn't want to have it and this has been true uh, including in Sweden which is the first country to really stop using antibiotics for growth promotion. Uh, in India that level of awareness just does not exist. It's social change, it needs leaders, it needs uh, stories and it really needs organization and this is how it's going to happen. A few months ago we published a paper in Science which which both quantified the amount of antibiotics being used in animals globally but also talked about the impact of policies that one could use. Now having a plan is better than not having a plan at all but without money to back up on these plans it is unclear whether they will actually translate into action and that is my biggest fear.